Exercise 14 is all about how we extend out our camera solve data to include objects that are moving. Because um, up till now, we've only been tracking uh, static objects. And of course, we, we need to track those static objects to get a good idea of the, the camera solve. We can't get a camera solve if all we've tracked is, you know, objects that are moving in completely different ways and completely different directions. You know, we need those static objects to, uh, to solve our camera. And I've got my camera solve already done here. Just using the, uh, the same techniques that, uh, that we had a look at in the previous exercises. And let's just color code these up a little bit and um, have a little look. So I'll turn on my mat so you can see them there. So we've got four different shapes. We've got our front sign here, which is our layer one. And this doesn't extend out all the way. It does have to stop at some point. So we don't have to have shapes that are extend out throughout the entire range of our camera solve to help to generate accurate tracking data. You know, we can have layers popping in and out. If we have a minimum of two tracked layers that are completely non-coplanar, then that's what Mocha needs to generate up the, uh, the camera solve. But uh, if we've got layers popping in and out, then there should be a bit of overlap between when they come in. So say we have our clip, well, let's take this one now, our track that pops out in frame 62. We shouldn't just start another layer at frame 62. We should take that back, you know, 10 or so frames to give the solver enough data to be able to transition between those different layers. But anyway, we've, we've got our camera solve done uh, and we've got a camera solve quality of 99%, which obviously I'm happy with. And if we look at that in After Effects, we can see that's, that's working quite nicely. Cool. But I also want to track in this man here. Now, he's moving. He's not a static object, so he can't be part of the camera solve. So how do we build up a track to get his data out afterwards? Well, let's let's track him through. Uh, and let's just do, we'll do a simple, straightforward track on his uh, on his back here. Uh, and shear is turned on. This is this is a classic shear where you've got a guy or a person, I should say, walking down the street. And let's just check that uh, it's working out all right. Let's take his this bit here and here. Well, let's turn our surface on so we get a bit of an idea. Let's play that back. That's looking pretty good to me. All right, so now we're gonna take out his data. It is really important that we have our camera solved already if we're gonna do this, uh, which I do. So once we've got our camera solved, we're not gonna to touch it, we're not, because if we start to solve up our camera again, we run the risk of generating up new data, which we don't want to do. So I'm just gonna have the layer selector, which is my man, uh, man track. So I'm just gonna have that layer selected and just export out the camera data again. Copy that to the clipboard, and it will take a moment to, uh, to copy that. And let's pop into After Effects, see what we can do. Now in After Effects, let's come in and paste my Mocha camera once more. It should have a little bit of a thing because it brings everything in. And now we've got a new camera up as well as our old camera. They should be identical. After Effects always renders out the top camera. So we're not seeing any difference in the camera there, which is great. But look what we are seeing. We are seeing, let's hit P on this, we've got our null objects here. And unlike the uh, the other null objects which we solved for the, well, for the camera, you know, these ones here are actually keyframed. So let's bring in just a random little button I've got going on there. Let's copy my position here to my random button. Turn off my other null objects there. Let's just reposition this up a little bit. Make sure if I am doing it this way, that we have all of the keyframes selected. And we can do that just by clicking on position. Let's change my orientation just a little bit. 
And now if I RAM preview that out, we should get a little button that's now following along with our moving object. So I hope as you can tell now, the, you know, the possibilities we've got for this is absolutely huge. We can use it to track in damage on cars. We can use it to, to help with uh, 3D particle systems or with you know, interesting title effects. So the order that we do things in is exceedingly important. We need to get our camera solve done first, and that has to be done on the static objects. We solve our camera, export out that data, bring that into After Effects or whatever application we're using, then come in and have our uh, moving object selected export out that camera data, no solve, just export out that camera data, and then bring that again in as a separate uh, piece of tracking data. And you have got your camera solve plus your solved moving object. This is the final exercise in Curious Turtles Fundamentals of Mocha with me, Ben Brownlee. Hope you found it useful and a good quick kickstart to your life with Mocha. Now, motion tracking is an art form and if you do want to go a bit more in depth with Mocha and some of the features that we just haven't even touched yet, including stabilize and remove, how to work properly with the uh, the curve editor and a whole host of, of other things. We've really only just scratched the surface here. Yeah, if you do want to learn more about Mocha, then check out some of my other training courses. And if you have an idea for future tutorials or training, then uh, just drop me a line at CuriousTurtle.com. But for now, my name is Ben Brownlee. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.